Dear M Diary, I just returned from the NAB show in Las Vegas and it was an experience like no other. I traveled all the way from Alabama for this event and let me tell you, it was worth every mile. The moment I arrived, I was immediately drawn in by the buzz of excitement and energy. There were so many people from all around the world, all gathered in one place to share their love for cutting edge technology and camera systems. I had the pleasure of meeting so many great people during the event. I even got to meet some internet friends in person. It was great to put faces to the names of the people I had been chatting with online for so long. I was blown away by the latest advancements in the field and I can't wait to start experimenting with them in my own work. And of course, I also took some time to explore the strip and soak up the nightlife of Las Vegas. I strolled down the street, taking in the bright lights and bustling crowds. I even got to see the fountains in front of the Bellagio Hotel. They were even more breathtaking in person than I could have ever imagined. Overall, the NAB show was an incredible experience that I will never forget. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to attend, and I can't wait to start incorporating what I learned into my own work. Until next time, George. And now, on to the tutorial. Once you have installed mDiary via mInstaller, it can be located in your titles, as well as your effects and transitions. To get a real-time preview of any of the effects or transitions, you can scrub over with your cursor. And this is just going to show you what some of these may look like and how they will affect your footage. And as well as over in your titles, if you scrub over, you will get a real-time preview of how these are going to look. Now you will get 11 transitions, four effects, and then you will get a variety of different add-ons frames, light leaks, overlay effects, and you will get many typography presets. Now, some of these typographies are really, really interesting, such as this calendar that we will go over in a bit. We have a destination, we have a different timeline here, and much more. So these are not only going to just be typography such as this quote, there will be many other uses for these. So really quickly, let's look over our intro. You can see what a final timeline kind of looks like. Here we have LUT presets, we have light and shadows, we have some blurring, we have a zoom in here, and then we continue that LUT preset, light and shadow blurring over top of our next clip because these are working as adjustment layers they will affect any clip beneath we have a transition into then having an outline frame over a majority of the duration of the rest of the video because it's kind of like a callback we have a timeline we've got refraction going on which is cool it just kind of distorts that a bit because this is a diary plugin so it's uh, kind of like a callback I will also say that M diary would work really well together with M documentary so then we've got some different transitions again light leaks we've got our zoom in go into a transition where I bump these uh, gentlemen here wearing a similar shirt as me interesting and then we continue down we have okay we've got me getting blown out by some light we have these recording presets that you can see here. So it looks as though we're looking through the viewfinder of a camera. And then we've got some different images that we used. And me just dancing like a moron. And then we have another one of these photo uh, recall sort of plug-in there. Different light leaks. We have scratches along with some green and our quote typography. Then we used our effects here on these, which I believe here we use the custom split screen effect to make those work together. And then light and shadows at the end along with some blurring and here we are. All right, so why don't we take a look at this together? 
All right, so we've got some different shots laid in here so we can take a look at these. So why don't we start first off with our LUT preset so that we can give this video a look. So here in our overlay effects, we can simply click and drag this LUT preset in over top of our footage, make sure that it is matching the duration. And then over in our inspector, you can see we have animations in and out. We have our different LUTs and then all of the adjustable parameters beneath. So here we have the Caribbean C LUT, but if you click this drop down, you will see all of your motion VFX LUTs, but then you will see motion VFX M Diary, and this is where you will be able to access the different M Diary looks. I think I do like the candy shop here. You can see LUT mix, you can see the difference that that's making, but then we can also do a bit of color grading to fine tune this here in our parameters. So we've got our levels and our blacks in. So if we wanted a little bit more darkness to the shirts we're wearing, then we have the blacks out. If we did want to raise that, we have our whites in. So if we wanted to brighten this shot up, we can bring this down. We have our levels gamma. We have contrast amount and then contrast pivot. We can toggle on our smooth contrast if we would like and our luminance only if we would like. So that's not going to affect the colors. It will just affect the contrast. So I think that looks really good. Let's show you before and after how we were really quickly able to use our LUT presets to get a really cool looking color grade really quickly. So we can take a look at our light leaks as well. I'm gonna bring those in just so you can see how they look. We're using light leak number three. On all of these light leaks, you are gonna have on-screen control for position, scale, and rotation. Over in our inspector, we have the position, rotation, and scale, and then we have a light color. So if you would like to open your color board and you can make adjustments to the color of this light, you do so here. Then beneath we have hue saturation that we can toggle on and off and you can change the hue of your color as well for more tuning, saturation, brightness, etc. We have a bulge so you can see how that is affecting that light leak. So here's our light leak without the bulge. But then we can turn that on and you can see the difference that that is making. And then light rays wriggling. So now you can see how that is affecting. It just kind of comes in, got a little bit of a light leak, and then goes away very subtly. Let's continue on down here. So I would like to bring my LUT preset on down a bit. Now the color of this clip does not match this clip. So we're gonna do just a really quick matching to some of the clips in there just so that we have a little bit of consistency throughout. There we go. Now here we can take a look at some of our overlay effects. So if we wanted to add a bit of blurring, I'm going to bring that in beneath. And then this blurring is really nice because we have these on-screen controls here. So with our on-screen controls, you can see that this is essentially applying the mask size the ending of the blur so you can see if we were to put this blur over on my face then you should be able to see how that's working together this is really good to create um you know a focus on a particular spot within your scene and these on-screen controls are great because you can do that so quickly and then over in our inspector we have our blur strength as you can see we can do a vignette blur or a gradient blur if we would like. So you can see how that mask looks different on that gradient. I do like the vignette blur, so we're gonna change it back. And then we have our horizontal blur and that's going to adjust the mask independently from the on-screen control. And then we have vignette blur invert or gradient blur invert if you have gradient selected. Now this is something that we did not use in our intro, but I did want to show you, we also have this photo loop, which is really cool. And it's very similar to like an animated GIF. So you can see here that that is just going to kind of bounce back and forth throughout the duration of your title. And then you have a very simple animation type of normal, 
you have fast, super fast, slow, and super slow. So that's just a lot of fun and I thought that y'all might enjoy that. And then as we scroll down, we have our different typographies. So you have this option here with a drop zone. We have this calendar, we have destination. Now I'm gonna just show you very quickly uh, one of our titles. So let me just grab title number one. I'll bring it in on top. We have our on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. And then over in our inspector, we have animations in and out, and then our animation speed. You can make adjustments to position, scale, rotation here. Content float, so that is going to be like just a pre-animated little push that you can see there happening on the text. And then if you wanted to make changes to your titles, you would do so here. All right, that's really great. Now here, I want to show you the calendar. This calendar is super cool. I'm going to just drag this in on top of the clip we have, and you can see that it just kind of animates in. And you have your on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. I'm going to scale this a bit up just so you can see it. And then over in our inspector, we've got animations in and out, etc. We have the day arrange set. So we've got set one, set two, set three, set four, etc. So you can make sure that your calendar is actually going to correlate numerically with the uh, the real dates in time. We have days amount from 31 to 28. We have calendar roundness here. We have border lines if you'd like to make a border. And then we have the select days. Now this one is so fun. So we have this on screen control here and check that out. It is snapping in place. So think about how M grid works. This just kind of snaps on. So if you're wanting to really highlight a certain number, you just have this on screen control and you just go to town wherever you need it to be. Really cool, really quick. I love this feature so much. And then over in our inspector, of course, we can continue to fine tune uh, that content. Then we have a range select. So if you have a specific range of time that you may be uh, letting everyone know, maybe you were gone for a trip or something, here we go, we have our in and our out, and it just works very similarly, again, to how that grid is working. So I love this feature. We can make the line thicker, we can change the color. I mean, you can do absolutely whatever you want in that regard. Really cool. We have additional colorize here, so if we toggle that on and off, uh, you can see that we are colorizing a certain section, uh, maybe every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, we do this, etc. We have the additional colorized type. We can do one day, two days, one days or two days. Let's turn that back off. And then if we wanted to change the year and the month, and you can even change if you want the first day to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, just depending on where you are in the world, you may want to have that option based on how your calendar is going to fall. And then we have the shadow and shadow opacity. So you can increase that shadow and that background. You can also change the color of that shadow if you would like. And there you have it in regards to the calendar. I think that calendar is so cool. I mean, I really, really do. And, you know, you could go in, you could keyframe this if you wanted to show, like, click, 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 click. You could just add some keyframes and you'd be good to go. So much fun. All right, moving on. So here we have a few different shots of just kind of downtown uh, on the strip there, I'm gonna go ahead and add that LUT preset across so that we've got those similar colors. And I wanted to show our effects and how those work. So over in our effects section, we have, I'm going to highlight a clip so you can see how it's affecting it. We have a custom split screen, we have a frame, then we have just a standard split screen and another standard split screen. So I'm going to select the split screen number one 
and I'm just going to click and drag it in. And then again, it is going to work similarly to M Grid, where you just have this on screen control where you can just snap each side into place, but then you can also adjust your mask if you would like. And then over on our inspector, we have animation type, either narrowing or extension. And then we have split screen orientation for vertical or horizontal. So you then have the option to do a vor vertical or horizontal. I'm going to go back to vertical. If you would like to add a line in the center, you can do so here, and then you can make the color whatever you'd like. So just gonna make it white, just so you can see the difference there. Toggle that off. And then we have fade and we have background. So if you wanted to actually have just a pure black background, uh, maybe something's beneath it, maybe this is a clip on top of another clip, you would toggle this on and you can add a background with whatever color you would like. I am going to bring this clip above and I want you to see kind of how this works. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna do my split screen here and I am then going to push this over to the side and then boom, now we've got both of those are happening. I'm going to turn my animation on. I'm doing this quickly just so you can see. So now it is going to just animate and then boom. So this is where you see that fade. So you see the fade coming in on the bottom. That is because of how this top clip is affecting it. So we can turn that fade off and then it is just going to slide over and there's our other shot. So that is how the split screens work. Then we've got these two shots here beside each other. So let me show you the transitions. So again, you can scrub over to see the difference in your shots. You've got a closing, you've got defocus, dissolve. We have fade. We have these film burns here. We have a quick flash with a bit of a shake. We have this glass. We have a roll. Slide speed ramping and zoom. So I'm just going to click this and drag between these two clips. And then you can see here that that just kind of closes and then reopens on our next scene. We have our animation type for start smoothing and smoothing or just smooth throughout. So you can see the difference here. And then we can do a transition mode of horizontal or vertical, depending on what you'd like, along with your letterbox color. And then we have brightness, saturation, contrast, etc. So that will affect your footage based on those adjusted parameters. All right, and that's about it. Thank you so much for checking out this quick tutorial on M Diary. M Diary is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.